Beautiful. Where's Yeah. You will. Howdy. That's difficult. There's a famous paper by my house that's been there. Good morning. Rock. Wow. Actually, how we start? How, not what. Yeah. Yep. You're a But howdy. Howdy. Did you write it? I think that I persuade you to grab me a quick cup of coffee, then I wouldn't have to find the crown. Um. Half cup of jelly. That'd be good. I can fight the crown, though. There is. Hold up. Well? There is. You can. Peach. From uh, Panera. Hmm. So, eggy thing. Uh, eggy I, thing. Haven't that, I haven't put that out yet. It's okay, whenever. They so didn't have any. It's really sort of loaded me up here. Everybody so. really wanted to have it and they didn't have any. So, mm -hmm. I got you a one Mediterranean and one four cheese. Let's just see how you want to. Okay. So, what's yeah. Julie's position? I'll put them on what tomorrow. did you say? Yeah, all right. I guess you got to go what, what did you Her say? Her position is about Julie. That she doesn't get into psychology, I believe, was the... No. Oh, that's right. That was that's my shocking. Yeah, you got a position. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you should come to I your defense. You sure, yeah. To my defense? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> because of my position. In some way. So, what... I mean... I have to defend you? What... No, no. Yeah. Shouldn't you say, on the contrary, I, Julia Hoga Quaker, with a PhD, no, I teach psychology that. classes all the time, you yeah. yeah. want psychology? No. I would fine, rather fine, have fine. Fine. Yeah. Fine. Or, or not, even if it's not fine, some argument, or, or rather this one. Well, I teach psychology, but that can't really be described as into it, because frankly, my friends, oh. psychology isn't something you can be into. It has no... Yeah. Reality to it. It's I so I'm into the higher. I'm into mm -hmm. philosophy and not mere, <laughs> the mere shadow, the mere appearance. Mm -hmm. this what we use? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? all of those could apply. So what do you mean? Is basically what the it's ambiguous. What that? No, no. Mean? This argument I happen to have overheard while walking with elder. Hmm. That with the elder. <laughs> That yes. you don't deal with the implications of your own psychology. I was amazed at such a thought. Could that be true? Yeah. Therefore, it's very well. Therefore, you're not into psychology. Ooh. No, I'm not into following implications of my own thoughts. I mean, that would be psychology. But what wouldn't be? So. By the way, whatever you experience, where do you tell your students they experience it? I don't do that. I just tell them what the theory is. That's all we need. That's what you're doing. You're teaching them the theory. The theory. And what do you tell them? That we see that in our head. In our, that we become conscious of it, we perceive it in our heads, in our ox in the cortical lobes. Say in the brain. Say, say in order to perceive it. Is it analogous to the movie? Any movie? Where you're seeing with in the spaces between the events? I tell them that too, yes. That their whole, it's all an inference that they're making as well. I mean, that's also part of the theory. Would you agree in a movie, if there is some mark on the screen, uh -huh. it destroys everything, <laughs> everything projected on it? Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. It makes it part of the movie. Right. Uh -huh. By the way, does that mean the mind on which all of this is projected is empty? It could, or there could be a mark on it. Must it be, must it be markless in order to experience everything without inner distortions? Yeah. Do you talk about that in psychology? Uh, no, but that's an interesting analogy or metaphor, um, which actually I was thinking about on the way over here, all the different levels of analogies that, you know, you can 
it's not an analogy. You, oh, you, well, yeah. You teach it. Mm -hmm. That's a fact that that's where we experience whatever we experience. And that it itself must be empty of all marks, must it not? Well, the question is, what is that that is empty of all marks? We've must rejected. you not assume that when you're that's, teaching people? Yeah. And they have, do they not have a right to ask, <clears throat> what, is that, what is that screen without marks? Oh, sure. Mm. That'd be great. But, but I, I tell I say it's the mind that we project onto the, into, onto the mind. But then do you tell them that it must be pure and empty of all forms? Well, I don't say that, but later I do say that any forms you have on there that you project are going to become your reality. Uh, if it becomes your reality, uh, okay. yeah, no, no. Mm. Do any of your students turn around and say, "Since I projected, is that a fact, or is that covering my ignorance?" Change it. Mm. By the way. You project on the mind. What is doing the projecting? Well, the mind projects on the mind. It both is empty and it's projecting at the same time. But projecting is adding to. Is it not? Yeah. Well, then you have one thing doing two different things. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't hold up well under scrutiny. But nobody gets that far in scrutinizing. Wait so, well, well, well. so far, I'm safe. <laughs> Do you at all try to explain? I just tell them, you know. Oh, okay. Do you ever try to explain where the forms come from that you project onto the mind? Where do you get, where does the mind get the stuff that it projects? Well, that's when I bring up the family and their beliefs. You're missing the point. The culture. Wait a minute, it yeah. isn't a culture. The forms? Where, where do they come from since there's. Right. Oh. Hmm. Must do not ask. What do you mean that? by the forms? Well, would you agree if the mind is projecting on something? Yeah. It must have some form itself. Hmm. Or it wouldn't be projecting upon it. Yeah. Where do those come from? The form of the projector? <coughs> the the that content. Would you agree? Oh, that gets projected? Mm -hmm. Where do they come from? Mm. And how is it imposed upon the mind, which is itself has no marks? <laughs> because it itself is a copy. Like, don't you tell your students, and when you see a, your fellow man, that image of a man that you experience mm -hmm. is itself a copy. I haven't gotten there, but that's a good thanks advice. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wouldn't you agree? Well, why you're projecting upon this thing which is indestructible and has no marks, you're doing something rather curious. The object that you're projecting on the mind itself changes, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Do you do that too? Yeah. 
So you not only project on it, but you project all the changes on it. What causes the changes in the mind that replicates what you believe to be in the external world of which you have no knowledge? Come on, we need help. It must be some echo. Pardon me. I don't you teach this stuff. Not exactly. No, no, we don't get that far. Why not? It's a, it, it you know, follows from what you've been taught. Yeah, but you know, that's when I send the students to philosophy. I say, you need to take a philosophy course here if you want to get beyond the brain. So I pretty much. Uh, we're not down. getting beyond the brain. We're talking about the but, brain. Okay. We're talking about what you are the, teaching people. Okay, we're still at the cortical lobe then. Uh, and the, Pardon me, we didn't ask where you think. <laughs> It's, it's neurophysiological correlate is we're asking where those things come from. Unless you want to say it comes from the neocortex. They would say that. It's is there any different. evidence that the forms as you experience them are the very content of the neocortex? No. Um, there has been. I've read like... When people play the piano, like the stimulation in the brain corresponds spatially to the key, how the keys are on the piano. And um, so that, I thought, well, that's interesting. That it's, didn't answer the question. Well, that's one theory that there no, is this correspondence actually in the physical lobe that corresponds to the thing there, there is no correspondence between the two on the level that we are discussing. Yes or no? You experience this cup? Do I experience it? Well, this is In the your question. mind. Well, no, you got me. I have to clarify what experience means. Because there's two things happening. I, there's the sensation and then there's the perception. So, you separate the sensation from the perception. Oh, yeah, this is a major distinction in psychology. So I'm a, my physical body is impinged with the electromagnetic energy of the cup, but then I organize it and filter it and conclude to my brain and what I'm seeing. Where does it come and that's from, perception. that part? Where does that come from, what you would now call the perception of it, since it's not contained in the sensation? It comes from the pattern of the firing neurons, along with my personal experience. That didn't explain why it is when you see someone, you see the same thing whenever you see them under similar circumstances. Well, that's true. We have certain constancies that are built into our brain that override that particular dynamic. And so, like size and shape and color different hues and um, brightness, certain constancy. So maybe there's some kind of a constancy that recognizes people, you know, or but look in here. their mind or something. Would you mind agree, constancy? given what you're saying, you also have to account for the fact that each thing that goes through this process also changes over time. Oh, the perceiver changes? <clears throat> the object of perception changes over time. Oh, yeah. But you're doing it. Why do you add change to oh, it? Oh, because the physical. Because we don't just see hey, the physical. You, don't, you never experience anything physical in your life. Well, that's the question. Again. Where in lies the experience? Is it in that sensation? Or is it in my perception? Oh, look here. You're the person who teaches this stuff. Certainly, you must have an insight into it. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I stay away from the word experience because I don't know what it refers to, to tell you the truth. I don't use that word. Well, 
I instead I'll say like so they think your students think that you're making sense since you're not sharing. No, they don't think I'm making sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's the very point you were making. I don't think I'm making sense. I mean, if they have questions, they're welcome to ask. Wait a minute. Are you saying that students go to universities, pay money, sit and listen to someone not make sense, and they don't say anything? I don't know. I'm only at the community college. At the university, <laughs> I see you. <laughs> yeah. No, it's more critical. We just charge more money, it. but they don't say anything. Why? Now, look here. Wouldn't you agree you have to explain how it is within you all the changes take place since you're doing it? Like, what shakes up all of the images that you perceive so that it can account for the particular changes that the thing goes through. What shakes up? All well, that, that give, well, it goes through all kinds of changes, so I simplified it by saying that there must be something that shakes it up to account for the changes that take place in all the objects that you perceive. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What, I don't know what you're asking. Look here. If someone came to you and said, you know, uh, I perceive whatever I perceive in my mind, I'm the cause of it, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't you want to say, then why do you choose to perceive things? Since you can make your object of perception, why don't you make it such that it doesn't change? Where does the change come from? Do you also project that on top of the objects that you perceive? <sighs> Sounds like a weird question. I would, I would never have thought of asking that. But we were walking along this morning, yeah. and these are the points that were being, that were being addressed. Wow. And I said, we talked to Julie Hoygaard. And I said, she's a good person. She teaches <laughs> this stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> and well, it was a good thing you arrived at Davis at that point. Because yeah. I think your conversation was off to. Oh, OK. What we're doing is last night. Oh. Hmm. That's what he's talking about. Right. And then the, and the nurse weird, or something. And the weird thing oh, that takes place is once you project on the mind, what causes the change? There must be it's something that rattles it to cause mm -hmm. the changes because it's not from anybody else. Yep. And that must be a curious kind of shaking. <clears throat> By the way, would you agree that after you perceive things, you can have them as they were? There's another curious property about it. Whatever you do perceive, uh -huh. the object always occupies its own place. Nothing else takes it. Wherever it goes, it preserves its own place, doesn't it? How do you account for that? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. That's yeah. what we were doing last night. And maybe they're just placeholders. <laughs> Yeah, but I count for it. Of course. Yeah. That's, right. 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 Of course that's, about that's what it, yeah, that's a place I'll count for the fact that that's what you must be doing. According to your theory. This is your theory. You're the one that says it's time. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not me. 
I was wondering why it comes out of him. Right. So how how does this correspond to was, the He was reading the, the what was it? Time 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 manage. Time manage. Yeah, he was arguing about everything we're not talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you think it was psychological? Well, isn't that what they teach? <laughs> it is psychology. That's the nature of the soul. That's what he's saying. Only when, like last night, a student came to school on, or Thursday night, and he hadn't been there for two weeks, and somebody was sitting in his chair, and he, like, he's a homeless guy, <laughs> and he was kind of like, and I could see him standing there with this girl, and I said, did someone take your place? <laughs> And he and she, she's like, no, this is my place, right? Because she's been there for two weeks, and he's, he has, and so it was kind of interesting. But he, neither of them uh -huh. saw the idea of a place that each thing occupies, and no, but nothing else takes the place of which it is. Right. Even as they move about, they retain the place. Right. Some students see that more. They identify their chair with their place. Yeah, but and then, then it's well, an issue. If so then <clears throat> they should move around with their chair. <laughs> no, it's the place. Yeah. 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 They don't care about the chair, it's yeah. that place <laughs> relative to, I don't know what, probably the brain. Well, I can give you the definition of psychology, and you can tell me where we can see it together. Definition of psychology is the study of the mental of behavior, and then the mental processes processes underlying it. We are talking about the behavior and the physiology. Are we not? The mental processes and like thinking. Yeah, it could part, be part of like what? Yeah, it's. I mean, I'm wondering really where this is properly placed in psychology. Like, is this thinking? Is this cognitive studies? I guess it would be. No, you know what? What do you do with what Pierre? I'm sorry. Oh. I, I let you do it, but. Well, Pierre raised a nice point that you can study psychology and you have the greatest opportunity to share that this is a study of the behavior of mind. Is that right? I'd be a behaviorist of the no, mind. No, on the contrary. The behavior of mind. Mind behaves in certain ways. Hmm. Behavioral management of the mind. The mind, is, the mind behaves. Yeah. <laughs> It was funny, the way, the way she answered, I was busy showing something, but uh, the way she began to answer the first one, every time it came to a question about the nature, how either the seer or the scene or the object seen in the mind, the answer was, we put it in that box. That every, all the questions that Pierre asked you in the beginning, you answered by saying, we put it in a box. And hmm. we don't question what goes on in that box. Every philosophical question Pierre asked about the screen, what what goes on to create an image on the screen, and he never did ask what the watcher of the screen was, but I'm sure that's there too. Oh, okay, yeah. All, all of those, yeah. every one of those things you answered as, we put it in a box, what you call the brain or the right. cerebral cortex. Yeah, that's kind of a behavioral and, paradigm that they just can't get out of. Them. And it just seems like, you know, you could just say, okay, let's unpack the box yeah. in any lesson you ever That's gave. Right. That's and you could box. ask those questions. Well, I, I'm just yeah. making a suggestion. That's kind of what they do at the university. They, they try to the they speculate about the box. What the but they do it in philosophy or they do it in psychology? In psychology, with some people. Who, who are more anyway there was, a, there was a you know next time you want to answer a question by throwing it in the box you might want to say you might want to open up the box yeah in fact when you get to memory they do have a box it is a closed well, the box system memory, but also all that cognitive function that you have to ask the watch or the watch the projection the, the empty screen all that stuff 
Right. None of that can be answered by just saying it all goes on in the box. Right. Okay. I did take a class at UCI once on quantum thought and theory in cognition, and they brought up the screen. That became part of our. Well, how come you can't ask the same kind of questions that he asked though in the psychology class? But you can. No, I, I asked her. Oh. How come you can't ask the same kind of questions he asked in the psychology class? How come you always have to go to the office? Um, because you can't bring in mind. you got to stay in the brain and in the closed I, I, I realize that. Yeah. But isn't that what you most want to do in the so you're talking about me personally? Yeah. That, that you, I most want to do? Yeah. In that psychology class? To take the risk to open up that box in front of you. Hmm. I suppose in principle, but personally it's scary. I, I should when I when I got out of when I got off topic, the kids loved it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Mr. Cole, you should be teaching a mythology class. That's why you should be teaching a philosophy class. That's why you should teach a history class. Right. No, let's conjugate verbs. Right. Okay, I got, you should go on and be a comedian. <laughs> yeah, uh, a lot of them said I should be a comedian. You are one of the bravest person I know. I can't believe that you would hold back from this. Well, you know, there, there, there are later chapters, like the chapter on motivation, where we talk about goal, having goals. That's where I start to get more animated in terms of talking about what are your goals and the direction and, you know, <coughs> I don't know bring in more, it becomes more personal. But I will do the screen. I don't like talking about how I do my teaching classes. So, if you were to answer the Well, we're still, we still don't know what your position was, why you thought I wasn't doing psychology. Well, it was, is about him. We were talking about how if, um, if we were to actually uh, follow through with, with what we've been taught, and which is the implication of it, how we would naturally run into blocks. It's, it's interesting. What, what, well, Oh, not doing your ideal. No, I mean, if we actually, um, like the, the teaching of psychology, if you actually uh, unpack it, and, yeah, if you unpack it, then you run into these things, which if we, oh, if we did that for everything that uh, we've, been, uh, mm -hmm. we've been taught, then
I don't know because then how can you project onto something that's free of all forms? Thank you. You got the question. Yeah. The question. That's not <coughs> a psychology based upon solipsism. Explain that. A lot of the time that's going to be important. Well, I guess that what you do with contradiction. Huh? I mean, I think you'd be just stopped in your tracks at that point. How could you go on except to say your theory doesn't make sense? Or, uh -huh. yeah. Projecting onto the formless? That's what he's talking about. How is that related to last night? That's what he's talking about. That's the, that's the subject of the time is. And that's why we're talking about the nature of the world. And the problem of the world. Hmm. Hmm. Page 123? Well, uh, it goes from 51 to 53. Okay, yeah. Oh, okay. Then you would be able to talk about psychology, the part that is not normal in psychology. Yeah, cool. What? I said, or in psychology. Yeah. But it's mm -hmm. no different. I did. Why? Good. Say, put your knowledge of chemistry. If you then have a theory about how all of these elements appear in the forms that we take in the study of the everyday world. You mean in terms of valences around? No. Um, no? The sharing of valences? No. No, no I don't. I. I find it a mystery. Oh. It's the same mystery that no one in chemistry wants to deal with. After you have your periodic table of elements, yeah. then you know how everything combines on a chemical level. Right. But does that explain <laughs> what you're perceiving? Like, what is the relationship between a carbon atom mm -hmm. and this? Yeah. How does the chemi chemical composition of it end up looking like that? Right. Go ahead. What, what have you been talking about? Well, probably that other stuff clings to it because of magnetic properties. How it properties. ends up with the form that you 
for sure. Mm. It gets puffed up with air. <laughs> it gets heated and then it puffs up and takes are you, some. Are you having trouble answering my simple question? I it, totally. I've never heard that addressed even. I heard it. I heard it in a chemistry class. All right. Spew forth. Yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, I raised it. <laughs> uh, all right. So I know damn well it takes place in chemistry <laughs> class. That's yeah, right. Like, isn't there some kind of, you know, laboratory where they can synthesize donuts? Did they get an answer? Did you get an answer? Yeah, yeah they can make crystals and it grow should, crystals. There should be some kind of formula and procedure to make yeah, it. Yeah, just soften it up, put a hole put in a it. Hole you got a donut? Did you, did, you get, did you get an answer? No. Mm. Were they, did they get angry? Yes. <laughs> But is it a question? Oh, man. Um, is it a question? How, is the, how are the two questions we are now relating fit together? You think by going on a subatomic plane as you go on explaining behavior in terms of uh, neural physiological process. Yeah. So chemistry seeks to understand the visual or open things of atomic structure rather than periodic Do they ever go back and say, now we can account for the particular forms that, that each of these things take? Like after studying the nature of a carbon, do you now go out and pick a leaf and say, now I understand how this carbon atom comes out of this structure and now how a leaf was produced? Oh, how dare you! <laughs> <laughs> no, she's calling you in. It's Drag me, the fellow materialist, into the conversation. <laughs> I'm not sure I even understand the thrust of Pierre's question without two coffees first. Right, the thrust. Like, of like, can someone explain to me why that's, why that's a question, a and b why it's important. Well. It, like, like, don't you just have a microscope and you just zoom out and now you're looking at the leaf, so where's the problem? Okay. And why is that an issue? Hold on. Would you agree there's such a thing as water? Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. Is it likely to be an important thing to understand? <laughs> okay. Oh. Um, no. You mean that there is something you recognize as important that you don't think it's necessary to understand? Okay. Yes. Hmm. Go ahead. Well, I don't think I, that's. I appreciate the defensive mode, but I'm not sure I can appreciate the fact that you would you would simply hold such a position without giving an account. Okay, here's the account. I'm 52 years old. I've drunk water all my life. All I need to know is it's pure. I don't understand it. All we need to know is what? Is that it's pure, that it's, that it's clean water. No, no. It's so right, someone came along it. and said, I, I will offer an explanation of water. Two gases come together. Yeah. And they produce water. Yeah. Is that an explanation of what water is? Since neither look like water. And you can do an electrolysis experiment, right, over and over again. And it takes place that way. <laughs> but does it explain what it is and why it took the form of a watery substance? Nope. Yeah, because of the bonds. The way it <laughs> bonds. It's that's that's another one of those things. Well, that's in the Timaeus too. Stock bond. Huh. Well, this is, of course, assuming I, I want an understanding of this issue, which I said I don't need. That's right. That's a modern. I don't need to understand why right. it takes the form of that. All I want. Yeah, I'm just trying to represent is it. how. Yeah. Hey, it's, huh. it's a pragmatist. That's it. Huh. Well, 
that's what they asked about. Was that the key? That, I thought that's that, what they brought up in terms of the um, chaos theory. How did you move mm -hmm. from um, water to steam? Yeah, transition, all transition. Right, and they and they they just they came up with a whole bunch of theories, but that's been their that was one of their See, but questions. That's the questions. same question mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. any transition from any of the so-called elements. Right. Mm -hmm. No, no, I was but, just bringing but, that as an example. Yeah, that's right. And I suspect Jeff also has uh, his own questions that they don't ask. Like, they have the, the binary numbers, and they can see how they work, but what would be a question that uh, translates those binary numbers into the... Um, idea of number. Or idea of number or it produces the forms that it... Well, the, so we're talking computer science now. The closest we would get to that, and I, I, it is on my list of things to read, uh, was Alan Turing's paper. That's right. But my guess, right? But my guess is that you would still not find that sufficient. That's right. Why? Oh, I haven't read the paper, so I... No, but from your past readings, why is it? That's the only thing. That was just my guess. The closest they get to meaning coming out of ones and zeros or that, but I, I, I'm willing to guess that they really he doesn't explore meaning itself. But that's my best shot at it. What 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 do you see for that? Do you know how much I spent on that? Solution to, to <laughs> issues they do not understand. But with it, we can manipulate various things. You can go really far. Yeah. So, is there such a thing as sound? Yes. Yeah, um, and it can be represented in so many hertz. relationship between the mathematical description of a note and a description of a signal. Mm. Is there something missing? Well, it's the same analogous theory to vision. That it's the, it's the movement of the hairs in the ear and that sends a pattern back to the... <laughs> that doesn't world. answer it. Okay. Does that answer the question, Jordan? No. Are you... Are you well, except that it's, it, um, it looks at your past memories of other things you've heard in your life and compares, and it might say, well, so that's where it gets weird. It yeah, is sure it is. Is oh. or not, like, you can make it can recognize Let's say it's exhaustive. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Where did you get it? Hearing stuff. So move it. Hearing? Hearing? Well, that's what we experience, but is mm -hmm. there a difference between the two as we experience? Certain ratios of perceived as beautiful. Um, that was <laughs> very then, quick over that hump. Well, that's a good question. I mean, because there are certain proportions we can see that are perceived as beautiful too. So it seems like it's an inborn measure. We're born to ignorance. You're saying, I don't know. It's inborn. Well, you're not taught those things. Pardon me, pardon me. Do you agree that when you say it's an inborn thing, you don't know what you're talking about? Otherwise, you'd have to explain it. How is it? That That's is true. 
I would have to explain that, and I can't explain it. Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting that universally, okay. internationally, around the world, yeah. that that one proportion, the golden proportion, is perceived by every culture right. as beautiful. And Beethoven, played in the midst of, a, of the rainforest, brings a cluster of people who've never heard it to hear it. So there's right. something that that is a there is some form that uh, transcends culture and um, and its neurophysiological explanation for its existence or its existence for its mathematical properties. Mm. Well, yeah, wait, wait, I, think I think we're taking some strides here um, in a couple of places, and I want to be sure and cover them because. Precisely these kinds of issues are the ones that I'm trying to work past myself, having grown up in a materialist family and spent my life in a materialist university and talking with materialist friends. And I'd like to represent them here in a couple, couple of ways. First of all, <coughs> they, will, they will always say to you, I mean, if we're going to prepare people for these kinds of philosophers, for these kinds of conversations, what you'll always hit with a materialist is, I don't care if... Everybody on this planet likes Beethoven. First of all, can you prove to me that there isn't one person anywhere who doesn't? Or even on another planet, if you're going to go that far. A. And B, we haven't skipped the physiological, because there is a genome that's common. Certain things are common in our genes amongst all humans. How do you know an alien landing would like Beethoven? There's always an external plus one individual that you haven't, yeah. so it's on you. If you're going to say it's universal, Mr. Platonist, <laughs> right? That's what they would say to me. You need to prove, you need to deal with that. Well, I can always add one guy in and say he doesn't like it. That's easy. I don't deal with those kinds of questions. Yeah. You didn't answer this. Not even a meaningful question. But yeah, it, it is. You can't make the claim. You can't say it's I'm universal making, anymore. I am not making the claim. The claim I am making is for someone to make a connection between, and it's really the problem of analysis and appearance. Whether you're going to analyze physical things in terms of chemistry and yeah, the, the right. periodic table of elements, how does that match your experience of this or this or a leak? Yeah, if you want to get back to that fundamental issue, they would simply uh, um, I think they would kind of come at it the way I did earlier. Why A, why is that important? And B, if you want some kind of explanation, I'll tell you it's neurons firing in the brain. And if we share it across people, it's only because we've had uh, similar training, similar cultural uh, so they can't upbringing. Answer. And even if you want to widen it out to the entire planet for Beethoven once again, um, I, I'd like to see the data on that. I'm not holding it. You're at, you're That's the way they'll argue three it. ideas. I don't hold any of them. You're saying I misrepresented your position. Well, the well, question is the difference between an a analytic understanding of something and its appearance in our experience. Right, and he presented three different anal ways to analyze it. One was they that it, it wouldn't that you would find one that wouldn't, or you could analyze and find all the numbers that you can. Uh, no, I don't remember the other two, but they were all an analysis. Is this? It uh, didn't explain the, the idea of experience. Of Well, it's like uh, I don't wait. Hold on. What did you ask? Because I was talking I said, as is well. Is this the same as the finger and the moon? The like, finger and the moon, like that. The, the finger uh, points to the moon, <coughs> but it isn't the moon. It's just something that points to it. The finger being uh, the analysis. Suppose someone came in. And said, I don't understand psychology because I don't understand that myself and my thoughts. If someone came into a chemistry lab and said, you know, I'm so involved in everyday things 
that I'm interested in a chemical understanding is that I can then see how the particular form that I see relates to your analysis of it in terms of the atomic state. Mm -hmm. yeah. A musician comes into a class of music, has someone interested in music, finds it beautiful, and wants to go to college to discover about the beauty of music. So he goes into a class and the teacher teaches him that a note can be represented by a certain range of uh, hertz, and uh, each one has a mathematical form. Would that, would that solve his problem? Can you give him some tools? <laughs> you can play it it's like tinker toys. <laughs> Again, you skip the issue. Wait, so what's his problem? That, those tools are oh. not. The question is whether those tools will help him with the, the so question. Beauty, of, the question of beauty. Or the question of what is experienced, or the question of physically or yeah, psychologically, wanna, right? What, what is the one I've got with the music for years? If you guys remember Jeremy Fletcher, yeah, yeah. long hair, he and I will. We could both sing in tune, we were in groups. And for years we're like, why is it that some people can and other people can't? We, we, we were trying to come up with an experiment to make Pierre sing and find out why he is, does not sing in tune and why we could. And I'm like, I can't point to a time, neither one of us can point to a time where we learned it, <laughs> we just always could. But there are programs out there where you can learn how to do it. And you're never gonna be as good as a natural but I, I cannot explain that. Like, all kinds of people can hear the same music and say that is gorgeous, but quite a few less can replicate it with their own voice. And it's my thought, I listen to singers who don't sing in tune, that I think they hear that they are in tune. I don't know, that, that's tough. That's, maybe a scientist would come up with some kind of device to say that they do or don't, I don't know, but, uh, I mean, you see people singing along terribly, and they they feel like they're right on it. So I'm going to add that one to your music problem of, uh, I, I think that brings even worse. Like, they all kinds of people can hear this beautiful music, and then they still can't do it back. I mean, yeah, yeah, but that's just a brain problem. So their, my, their neurons are inborn, right? Their neurons were just never set up. I mean, I'm just playing the material that's right. Kind of like I got bad neurons for the you eyes, the good ones yeah. the ears. That's all. <laughs> yeah, I can still do it with hearing damage too. The question is, it no. reality? That's right, and it strikes me that the question what Jeff <laughs> presents it's. I take it to that lady who suddenly saw the analogy between her dancing and her ability to dance and her ex her excellence in dance and how she could apply it to a formula in math. You cannot explain that to anybody. I mean, I could sit up in class and, it, yes, there's this relationship. She came to see it for herself, from herself, from her own experience, how she got that relationship. Where does that come from? I, don't, I, I mean, I wouldn't be able to explain it. Maybe somebody could. What are you talking about? Gina, is that like she had an experience counseling someone? I think, or oh, well, I'll bring just the formula in math you know, uh, a plus c, uh, six ten times the uh, quantity, five, anyway, whatever it was. I may not be answering it clearly. And uh, Gina, is that, me as, is that like your point? Pierre would do in his class, we have all these awesome sports stars that are like the best of the best, and then you look at them on their personal level and they're rotten people, right. why doesn't the excellence of the one translate to anything else? Yeah. Or that it, when it, that they can, and at that moment, they experience something that's really sure. profound. Sure. They are able to take that excellence. We don't. Um, we, I, I don't know how to answer that. I don't know what it would bring that to, to answer why it is that they, not, not so much why they don't, as much as when they do, where does that come from? Uh, as I understand what Pierre's asking, they, they're able to experience that connection. Well, but, didn't Pierre make a point yesterday in class, uh, Parmenides, about analogy and what it takes to see an analogy? That 
right? That that's because that's what your your yeah. dancing person said song, right? Yeah, but I don't. And maybe off topic. Hmm. The original question was whether or not the party was enjoying the last song. Was it one of the people enjoying the last song? Was it one of the people enjoying the last Um, how about a cultural, um, a, a, a cultural um, equivalent to pathologos, like a pathologos functioning at, like the core of a, the core of a pathologos is that you're sort of bribed. You have a you have a rare you have a rare event. A parent is in a state that you've never seen them in before. It can be accompanied by other things. They're aghast or they're surprised, but but the core is that they're showing themselves to know something and to, or to even be beatific. They have a halo. They're, you're like, whoa, and you're mesmerized for a second. And on top of that, their attention is on you, right? All of this you've told us. <clears throat> So it's very, and you know, given the low development of your psychology as an individual, or you know, your, yourself as an individual as well, and your dependence on them for everything, shelter and food, this whole, this whole situation is set up to make it very, very difficult for you to, even though you have all the power in your hands to, to you know, hey, what are you doing, Ma? What are you doing, Dad? It's very difficult to do that, if not impossible, at that moment. But you also take away from that an image of yourself, which is a lie. On a cultural level, um, but you get, wait, one more thing, but one, but what you get out of that is uh, you do get a payoff. In a sense, it's a kind of a bribe. You get a messed up kind of love or a messed up kind of attention. Um, you get family membership, you get whatever out of it. But, but you do get that as a price for giving up yourself and your state of mind that you were in at the moment, which I think I also feel. So at a cultural level, you're sitting in a university class, or third grade in elementary school, whatever. We tolerate it because um, perhaps money in our culture is the surrogate for love. And so now instead of, this, you know, and it's messed up, but hey, you want the jobs, we'll give it as long as you sit in these classes and tolerate it. That's very similar to a pathologos. Don't question, just take this image of yourself. I'm a, I'm a chemist, I'm a janitor, that's an image. I make so much money, that's the love. I agree not to ask questions. Uh, you know, that's, that's the point of having the control in your hands that a child has, but not executing it. Um, and to some degree, we're also immature, even as young adults. So all the same qualities happen in, in, an, ed, in an educational setting. We get the buy-off, but we give up ourselves. We give up uh, our pursuit and everything that we know to be true. So um, is that a reasonable attempt at an answer for your question? No. It sure was long. <laughs> <laughs> It was long. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> Why? Why is that not a reasonable attempt? I'm just saying. Sorry, give me the question. We tolerate it because it's pathologos operating on a cultural level. Is that, is that better? <laughs> what is insufficient answer? about that answer to answer your question? I don't. Hmm. One thing I 
comes down to the right question or whatever you think. I like that. I mean, that gets a cause. Yeah. But that's what you're talking about. See, Nobody can what say am I, what am I doing cause of anything morning? because they're all relativists. One may be because it's linguistically that it would require What happened last night to all of us that we couldn't make these distinctions that I'm making now because it's all in the text? <coughs> Agree? Yes or no? Did a number of you have a certain degree of confusion last night on what the hell it applies to? Huh? What, what it applies to? No. Unless. Well, well, no, no, not what it applies to. What it means. Yeah. Mm. Very little. No, just make it. But I didn't know. Make it. Talking about. Talking about. Talking about what goes on in it when it explains what it means. You generate four categories. Maybe four categories. And if you stop and think about it, you can see that that's exactly what it's implying. But, you, but the curiosity is you see that so far in our discussion that that may be the case. Are you just describing what indeed we're talking what we're doing today, this morning? <coughs> no. So, but I know that when in the old days we talked about uh, there must be something that receives perceptions. Yeah, that's right. Do you not agree? We agree that whatever it is that receives impressions itself mm -hmm. must be free of all distinctions, otherwise it would be a continuous distortion in the field of perception. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Did it not talk about that? Where the hell did the forms come from? That we project on something that itself is free of all forms. Did it not yeah, talk about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did we also talk about the fact that there's something curious that goes on in our mind? That everything that you're experiencing is not constant, but changes. Mm -hmm. That oh, everything yeah. changes. Mm -hmm. It could we shake it up. raise the question yeah. of what is it that shakes everything up in order for the changes to take place? Right. Did we not talk about the fact that there's something curious about whatever it is that you experience that it occurs on two levels <clears throat> in a place, and each particular thing has its place with it, with it, with, with within which it continues to exist, and nothing else can take its place. Mm -hmm. Are not these the essential ideas that he was dealing with last night in the family? Yeah. And you're in a place to do all that mm -hmm. as well. Right. Although it may not be your place to say what anything does it about do, it. What does it do to you then now to say, my God, maybe it is what we're talking about that mirrors what is the content of what goes on in us? Well, cool. But. <laughs> Are you saying, yes, just to clarify the quote, the reasoning part would be the clear, the clear screen. The place in which it could happen would be filled with the becoming, yeah. and what becomes are the elements. Yeah. And so the, the elements, elements are shaken up through becoming in a place which is perceived by, by mind. So or by opinion, true opinion. I or by true right. opinion. Right. Right. And that hasn't been clear to me. And the projector, yeah. who does the projecting? That's the one that gets shaken up? Yeah. That's, that's the place. 
that's that's the one that can get shaken up. When you summarized it, actually, oh, then it, you didn't see it until I summarized it. Well, because when I went to look at it just now before your summary, I was only focusing on. It seems like God put all that in place. He, he we have nothing to do with this. It just is God's doing. And I said, Oh no, because I was just focusing on God. <laughs> but so. Oh, no. Oh no, God plays your role in it. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder I can't teach it. Hmm. Yeah, really. Yeah, that does. It's curiosity. I'm wondering whether or not you find it curious. I mean, when I summarized it, you didn't see that it was in that possible. Uh, what you just asked my opinion. Yeah. Well, see, I never clearly saw the fourth kind. I mean, is that the, sh the shaker? That That's the part I had. So I wasn't sure how that fit into the perception part. You're doing what you think the people is that you are the first one. Right. Nothing. Because it seems overwhelming. Because in psychology, we have, we hang our hats on previously talked about theories of philosophy. Wait, 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 wait. I want to hear the rest of this, but he cracked up three words into that sentence. Why? I'm going to wait for the Platonic philosopher <laughs> to articulate this theory. You and don't then... need a Platonic philosopher to articulate this theory. Yeah, this is, this is all in. This all follows from the theory of that you, in fact, project the content. Okay, so this would be part of philosophical psychology, right? It's laying out this position, that this has to be... Um, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> you could write an article on it. So this would... So we need this in psychology. We need this philosophy. This Whatever you call it. I don't know metaphors. what you call it. Question is, well, does it not deal with all of the all of the issues in psychology based upon the assumption well, of solipsism? But see, look, God, God's doing all this. <laughs> so this is a God began by first marking them out into shapes, hey, and then God constructed them like hey, who? We're talking about. Yes. Uh -huh. So that if you are in fact, then you can talk about 
<laughs> right. Because we've always got it there to compare. Is that what you're talking about? No. no. Where did that original idea yeah. right. Where'd that come from? Yeah. Fragile. That's when we go to the idea of the dark capacity for some primordial source. Right. Right? Because it looks like there's some enduring quality in general for every general idea and we can make some particular thing. Right. Across through opinion, right, and some perception. That it mirrors something that has known for weeks and for what we call the future. Have you seen uh, in that argument in the Phaedo for equal? Yeah, the that I'm referring to is that there is that we come in with ideas um, or form ideas that we make use of in making judgments about objects that we perceive. Yet the objects we perceive do not contain those qualities like equal. You never see two sticks that are perfectly equal, and therefore there's got. For you to say that means you have an idea that goes beyond any physical object, you know, and that that idea therefore must be, they in the Lafitte they argue argue that you came in with it, you know, mm -hmm. not right, but, but and therefore that it has a higher source, a non-physical source. Yeah. Let's see what the discussion should be. <coughs> Are there other ideas like equal? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I agree. But that was puzzling. Yeah, no, 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 no. But then, how do we access that if everything we're doing is projection? Mm. What is it called? Turn about? <laughs> Question? Question? See, where this ends up is we may have to finally give up the idea that you are projecting all this on into the mind. Mm. You experience is within your personal mind. Mm. That's where it's going to go. If we're going to get more and more riddles, mm. right? <clears throat> the operation of the mind must be astonishing. It creates and it projects. Mm -hmm. Right. And shapes up things in order for it to change in the way in which it does. And each thing that you do project upon has its own place and it never leaves the place upon which it is projected. And yet it's made in a certain place, a certain creative place, all of that is going on. Hmm. You have to take the question seriously. You don't get an answer by saying it's projected in the mind. It's on the mind. Sounds like a drive in theater. <laughs> <laughs> There's a concession stand over Uh, what happens when you watch a movie? No, see, I have this. Right. If it is that clear, how come it isn't part of our education in, in grade one? Like, why don't teachers come out in the third grade and say, hey, now we're going to do a little thing about perception now. Ha <laughs> ha! Let me give you all the puzzles. down and we turn it around. Right. I laugh like hell when they tell me that. I laugh my freaking head off. They still do. They still do. <laughs> Upside down and backwards. Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm going to stand on my head. You see everything right. That's what I'm saying. Well, <laughs> I know. It's all crazy stuff. It's <laughs> well, mm. is it because, like, um, I was going to ask you about, for me, the impact of your <laughs> question has kind of raised me up, right, mm -hmm. into a, um, I don't know how to describe that well, but definitely different state of mind than when I walked in. 
Hmm. So I was presupposing that if Julie were to ask these questions, or if a elementary school teacher were to ask these questions, the impact upon the students would be a, a similar thing. It would take them right out of the, this is my mind projecting, you know, into what is the source of the forms that we perceive, or what is the right way things come to be in the physical world. They look for explanation. They look for explanation. Instead of what eliminates. Hmm. So, it would, and I'm wondering if that state of mind, our question, um, would be, is what they're afraid of. Is that the, when you take someone to that point of freedom where they're reflecting for explanations, looking for explanations, and you've knocked out the <laughs> upside down retina explanation, then, then, um, the, the, the because the very state that we talk about in the path, you know, the path logos, the free state, the open state, aren't you by these questioning creating a free open state, right? Which so I don't know. And that's not well. I do know. I'm just saying that um, I wondered what Julie's students would have to say if she were to take them through this line of questioning, right? About the change in their state of mind. Mm. What do you think? Have you done anything comparable? Which come out of a guy 2,500 years ago. No. <laughs> wait, 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 Julie. <laughs> because he's primitive. Because he's primitive, nobody reads him. But, but Barbara uh, was asking if you had ever done anything comparable with your students. And I remember you telling us, well, I remember you telling us uh, a few Saturdays ago that mm -hmm when you introduced the subject of dreams in your mm -hmm. class, they all sat up and oh, got yeah. interested. Right. That was last semester. Oh my god. <laughs> this semester they're different. Students are really, boy, they're, they are uh, really interested this semester. They want to know. They, they're not going to take much bullshit. And they're going to let you know now. Let me give, give me a couple of examples. Okay. <laughs> we were talking about dreams, actually. Okay. And this one girl goes, okay, what does that mean if uh, you never remember your dreams? And I said, well, if the dream state is analogous to your waking state, then sometimes people won't remember their dreams if they don't want to look at their feelings. And they don't want to look at, reflect on their life. They may not dream, remember their dreams. And so one guy goes, "Wait a minute! He's saying that that's when people don't remember their dreams because they don't want to look at their feelings." He goes, "I have a friend who really wants to look at his dreams, but he um, he couldn't remember it in the morning." And I said, "Well." Okay, well, I'm just saying this is one of the reasons, but somebody else, and then it was like, I'm starting to, you know, let's see. Uh, but so that was the attitude, you know, he was like, on Why the ground. Why don't you tell them what you know? Well, then I did tell them about philosophical midwifery, and I no. mentioned your name. Why don't you tell them what you know from the UCLA case study that you happen to know? I don't know that. Are you talking about the, I don't know. They brought them into the lab, they had a considerable amount of money, and their American fellows came in. Yeah. Well, what happened to them when they put REM down? I read the book, Oh, yeah. 
both showed that they were having REM movement and therefore dreaming. You know that. Well, no, I, I think that's what you're leading to. Every 90 minutes, they woke up the people and registered the rapid eye movement mm -hmm. and they were dreaming. They, they could recall. Every 90 minutes. Okay. Okay, good. I should read that study now. And therefore, there was empirical evidence. Oh, right, this is a forgetful issue. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's a good one. But you know, but. Forgetfulness. But I'm asking, oh. you know about this study? Well, yeah, we talk about the 90 minute cycle and dreaming. Why don't you use what you know I asked you? Well, I didn't know about that study, that particular study. So, um, but also, don't you, haven't you experienced the fact that you can, um, you can, it's not a matter of one morning when you wake up and don't remember your dream, it's a matter of ask, saying to yourself, I'd like to remember my dreams, and mm -hmm. if you start neglecting them, you're less able to recall them. If you start right. attending to them, you're more able to recall yeah. them. Yeah. And that's an answer you know too. But I, do say, no, I do say that too. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think, I think that's, that's a very good point Barbara's bringing up because I did that with my mom. You know, she's a psychiatrist and she's great, but she said, I don't dream. I haven't dreamed for 20 years. Same number you threw out, Pierre. And, um, mm. you know, and I, I, had, I, I wouldn't have been able to quote UCLA by name, but that's the study I told her. I said, hey, when they start seeing the eyes go back and forth, they wake them up and say, what were you doing just now? And they can recall the dream they were in. So I said, but there's this technique Barbara just talked about that lucid dreamers, <laughs> Tibetan monks, everybody's known for thousands of years. Just keep a piece of paper by your bed or a recorder, and you know, it'll slowly start to come back to you. Yeah. The very next morning, yeah. she had a dream. All right. Yeah. My students say that too. Now, if you did this to the students in your class and made it an assignment. What did that do to her? Oh, she was so happy. And we asked, what did it do? Uh, that she had a dream or that we could explore it. That she discovered her former beliefs were not true. <laughs> I guess I failed to push that with her. That didn't um, seem significant because... She didn't, I mean, uh, what state of mind? She was, she was excited. I mean, that's all I can... I mean, she was really happy to... She was... A, like, yeah, and it was this and this and this. And isn't it interesting that while most all of us, even, even when we can recall a dream, we don't understand it without some exploration. And we think it's just all hodgepodge. And yet, it's so meaningful to us, even without, like, people want to tell you. She wanted to tell me and go through everything she remembered, every step of it. It's so personal, and yet she didn't have an understanding of its meaning or its intelligibility or its rationality yet. But boy, got her attention into it. Never ask her, why doesn't she get off her ass and come around Friday night? <laughs> <laughs> I have, and you know, we've talked about it, and she says, I really want to come. She's very feeble now. And to get her out to California from the other end of the country is, is tough. Uh, but if she, if she came out to live here, you can bet she'd be here every week. This should be she loves challenging this. Her, her whole career. Yeah, but I think she's stepping out of it. She wouldn't have five years ago, but she is... Um, She's done a lot of change. You know, she's she ordered your book off of Amazon and started reading it. And she said, "Holy crap! This is this is where it's at." How far did she get? <laughs> the orange suit? Yeah. So she's you no. Know, I think she's stepping out of the the the, the standard psychiatric models. She's no longer. Yeah. Deteriorating her mental functions. She is creating a need to increase them. And yeah. Beyond her formal mm -hmm. strict passage right. Yeah. yeah. And we just sat this morning on the phone. So the reason I'm late, we sat and had a wonderful talk about the talk you and I had Wednesday, where we skipped around and, and touched on all the midwife talks we've had in the last five years and kind of did that view from 30,000 feet. 
And I said, you know, I haven't wanted to share too many of the talks before because they've only been a piece, but wow, this puppy really wrapped it together. And, and she said, well, I'm really glad for you that you're so excited and that, and that, that it really worked, but I want to know what the content of it was. What, what was it? What's the path of logos? Right? right? Yeah. She wants, she wants straight gonna, for it. And it I said, yeah, how do you want? Well, yeah, it's a, it, now it's back to a pragmatic issue. Her CD's broken. She doesn't do anything on the computer. I said, look, we'll find a way to get you that recording. Yeah, she wants to hear it. And, well, I actually know, were you going to write up that synoptic vision you had of seeing how all Oh, I saw it. Would I write it up for her or for all of us? Yeah, to publish or something. Yeah, it sounds good. cool. That's a that was fun. It was, I didn't, um, it was truly fun. That was because everything that we brought up, tick, 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 was a previous talk that we had had, but we didn't have to spend an hour going into. Now we could just weave them all together and... Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, and that's an experience of uh, intelligibility and beauty in one's own personal experience that is uh, just priceless. to jump to uh, what is it undestructible right there's something undestructible like these these profound uh, reflections and most people run hear that, but... run <laughs> right they'd have to get out of psychology all of a sudden you'd have to be uh, yeah looking <laughs> At what he's talking about. I believe this is a oh, no tape recorder or something. <laughs> no, 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 no. Five. I believe this would be a meaningful oh. question for Aboriginals in Australia. Oh yeah. Yeah. American Indians, Tibetan yogas, anywhere. Because no, no, I don't know. That's why I'm raising. And in any time, I think you've said before, not just now, but 10,000 yeah. years ago. Yeah. I'm not blaming, I'm, I'm not saying. saying. The reason is we're a bunch of fundamental uh, conservative thinkers and we're all brought up to be materialists. No, I don't know. That's just what they want to answer the question. The question is, why isn't it usable? Why is it people can say that it, that it makes sense of certain very profound riddles going on right, right in themselves? Like it's not, it's not, where did God get the farms? That's what I want to know. That's not a good question. That's, that's, we're talking about human experience. The way we make sense of what appears to be our experience it doesn't make any sense. Right. And when it's detailed, it's even more profoundly complex. So no, no, puzzling. That's why I call it the most baffling clause. 
which is how do we tackle them? Is it like a model of the intellect and the collection and the intelligible? Is that kind of can you overlay that? Yeah, is that the higher? That's the higher. That's, that's more metaphysical. No. Have you ever checked Uh, I think Julie presents it well that it's mechanical. It's asking hows. That's it. I agree with all that. All right. My question is why this is on available mm. in multiple texts. How many copies of the Common English do you think are available in all the languages? A lot. Wouldn't you agree? A number of people, however many you want to count, oh, have read the damn thing. But I see very few people, and I, I've never met them, can deal with the issue, the simple issue of what's going on in our own mind. Oh, yeah. hmm. Have you? Hmm. But it's there. It's a description of what goes on in our own mind. It's a description of what goes on in our own mind. That's it. Uh, and no one, I didn't see it until we read it again last, I read it last night, although I've read that before. That's what I'm interested in. <laughs> Look here, that's what I'm interested in. Now we may blame, see, we may blame it on the translation, which I do believe is right. Mm -hmm. But no matter how bad the translation is, it does bring out those issues mm -hmm. in a general form. It could have more precision with the use of the word self rather than mind. And self is in that section. Yeah. I, I, I was yeah. noticing that there's outtain, outtakes several times stated in that section of nurse, of the nurse of becoming. And when I read it that way last night, it, that's when I saw that it could that it was describing uh, 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 what what goes on in in one's in the mind or, or or psychology, if you want to put it that way. Yeah. Why I didn't see it before? <laughs> uh, I'd love to be able to answer that question. <laughs> I have no clue. I mean, I can rattle off all my reasons, but I haven't. They're just. Empty. What's the word for nurse? Yeah. The thing name. And I had the name. I had the same question last night. How come I haven't seen this? Where, where, where's my head? Where's my mind? Such that now I can see it differently. I have that question all the time. I have it in discussions. Where's my mind? Now I see it. I didn't see it before. Although. I have listened to your tapes. I've gone through your videos. I have, I don't know how many dozen, millions of talks I've sat through. What's different? Why can I hear it now? And I couldn't hear it the past 40 years. I mean, I don't know. I just am puzzled by it over and over again. So just multiply that by as many people yeah. who have read the thing over and over. Yep. I, to answer that, well, I can say, well, it's the number of midwife talks I've gone through. You know, that's not an answer. You can take person one midwife talk, you know, like that. I, I was in a great school to see the Chinese. They went as far as 30 days. Oh, they, wouldn't go, they wouldn't go through the rest of them. 30 days? You know, I mean, what the? <laughs> Universal and Plato, like a, a 
relative of mine is coming in April, and she's read the Phaedo multiple times. Yeah. And when we have sat down and talked about it, we were not into the same dialogue. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like That's right. on one level, yeah, but on another level, no. And I'm like, and I could tell she had read it enough. I'm like, you are not unversed in this. So it's not like you went through it once and were saying, oh, what? Did, so what was her reaction to your... I don't recall, it was a few years ago, I was thinking, what's, you know, should I invite her to Friday and next time she's yeah. out here? It's up to her, I gave her his book last time she was here, so yeah. that was a year or two ago, so I haven't talked to her since, so we'll see what happens. And it makes me that if we go over it again, we'll see it again in a new way. Mm -hmm. well, that, that's not true, but far many years Oh! <laughs> <laughs> but Pierre, um, but, this, but, but Jeff's point, uh, and the point that you two are discussing um, dovetails into the, the question you were opening up yesterday after our Parmenides discussion, which is, um, why is it that people cannot read? Yeah. And we ended up standing outside here uh, reading um, Mark chapter 4. It's like Bible study. How many people can say, you know, they've almost memorized the New Testament, right? But they're only reading, quote-unquote reading, in a very, other, they're more like memorizing, right? They're not critically, they're not using their mind, like, what the hell, why would God need to get angry? Right? That's an inconsistent, like, how does that make any sense? They're not looking for... I, I once raised in the class, I said, how is it that in the Gospel of Mark, there is no word in there, Christ. The word Christ does not appear in the <laughs> It isn't there. I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and where it is, if you have a modern text, they'll make the note that this was inserted to 400 AD. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it is not part of the. By the way, I also, I think I mentioned the other day, but I had a talk with a Catholic uh, school and the whole thing all the way through. He was astonished to discover that on the pattern was, was sent <laughs> out of the garden. He was not exiled. He was not punished. He stayed in the garden. And he went to the place from which he was taken, which is the moment of his creation, the place of his creation, the idea of place again. Right? A holy place. Oh, In terms of my own experience, I think this is be close. Um, I mentioned it the other day when we were working on analogy, and I did it many, many years ago. I was working on certain analogies. I think it was in the Protagoras, and I remember a particular experience when I could see a certain relationship in the Protagoras that came up with. 
I think it was the quote that Socrates had talked and used as a presentation. And I remember that, I remember that I saw the connection, I saw the analogy, and it was like somebody took a machete to my brain. And it, and it's like I've been struggling ever since to kind of get back there. I know a way to get back to it. How do you do it? Read it. Read it, write again, do it again. <laughs> But no, that would have been a good idea. But no, they can't do that. There's a taboo, you can't do that. There it is. The taboo <coughs> to be in that state. Oh. To pull that together like that. It's a tab the machete was more important and to even question that that was a an experience that I should be concerned with. Cultivate. No. No, mm. no, the experience to cultivate, but the machete action to even question that was not possible. To say that that was something that cut off that state, no. And so it's like it, it's coming. It's everyone. I I get into the insights more, and I'm going, and I see that state of mind come back, but less so. But that was the critical moment for me when I, you know, upon reflection, when I brought it up a couple of days ago. Why it's coming up now, I think, is because um, I'm valuing that state more. But back then, as several, you know, since then, it's been a struggle to get back there. And I have not known that that was the struggle I was working on, but I, I think that was, that is a moment for me that. Uh, bad <laughs> or good or whatever. You're gonna master them. So what are they exactly? What Stefan's numbers? Fifty-one to fifty-three. Fifty-one to fifty-three. By the way, why didn't you remember that? Well, Since because you it at because four times. Well, because I see some stuff in fifty that I thought was part of it. Well, right. you're saying fifty-one to fifty-nine. Go to fifty. Okay. Actually, it starts at 49, if you want to know that exact point. <laughs> I do. Uh, yes. Okay. Look at 49, the paragraph. Okay. Yeah. Got a bit of... Uh, we must, however, in the beginning, our fresh account of the universe make more distinctions than we did before. Right. So now he's going to make more distinctions than he ever made before. Okay. Because he now wants to include something that he left out. Okay. You want to start that whole section? What page would you start? One thirteen. Which is forty-nine. Yeah. Okay. Well, one thirteen is well, it's forty-nine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and just for the audio, where uh, this is the in the low edition. But it's forty-nine. Yeah. I know this. Stefan is not there. Except one twenty. One twenty-three. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, keep reading just for a few minutes. Oh. Uh, uh, slow though, because I'm a slow reader. Okay. Okay. For whereas then we distinguish two forms, we must now declare another third kind. For our former exposition, those two were sufficient one of them being assumed as a model form, intelligible and ever uniformly existent, and the second as the model's copy, subject to becoming invisible. Uh, what do you think the Jewish talking about? Uh, some concept and an idea of the concept, or the, yeah, some concept that we have. And then, oh, and then our, hmm, I don't know. Good. <laughs> he was waiting for the answer, by the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't go any further. Oh, no, what about? What the hell are you talking about? There's nothing in the must to come before that image? 
Hmm. Yeah, was, I mean, there's, there's a, a being and a becoming, becoming now. We've, We've got, got something, something, something permanent and something changing. Okay. So, so I gotta stop reading now? Yeah, yeah you go ahead. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Flag on the field. I don't like that tone of voice in Grimes over here. <laughs> I think that was a poor understanding of what's going on, but. Intelligible. <laughs> and the second. Becoming invisible. It's a rehearsed sin as you started with concepts and its copy. No. Not a concept. So that's a keep, keep going. Okay. We're right. over. That's a modern thinking. Uh, a better one would be. I do. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Not why. Okay. Well, and you understand what the capital I means? Yeah. Uh, could well, you could you help me with that? Because I don't. It means it's more primary, more primal than um, the specific. But wait, let me just keep it. Yeah, right. So what, I'm not supposed to keep reading there? No, I... well, you got a, not a bad reading. It's about a C. <laughs> is that the same, is that the same non, non, is that the same primary element that he talked about, the one kind, later on? Did he talk about the, the reasoning part and then the becoming part and then the place? Yes, yeah, those three. Is this... The two distinctions he's making here. Okay, so there's three here that are different from the three that are coming later on. Okay. Oh, okay. So, do you think there's such a thing as an experience of beauty of self? Again, this experience word is a question in my mind. I don't think you can experience something that has no. That's no bullshit. bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're experiencing me, right? <laughs> okay. okay. Have you been in meditation? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, one of the uh, noble experiences you've had, please. Well, there was no inside or outside. There was light. I saw myself <laughs> seeing um Was there any beauty to it? Was it worth looking at? It was more of an experience. I had to actually answer my question. Were you bored with it? No. No, no. no. It was kind of the way uh, Bradley described his experience of hovering, hovering last night. It was just like a state of, like, Remember the terms he used? Do we use those terms he used last night? Those words? Yeah. Did he use the word beauty in some way? Well, he did. Well, would you say that's the one you have was ugly? No, but it was light filled. I would say the light was more my experience. Was more luminous. It was luminous. Oh, you had the experience of light? Luminous? Oh, okay, yeah, that's an experience. Oh, by the way, is it possible that uh, you could say as a result of that experience that you saw something more real? than anything else you encounter in your everyday world? But you say no, that was a fleeting thing of no consequence. It had a consequence. A bit like hair on an elephant's nose? <laughs> um, well, I found it expansive. It was like, Any end to it? No. Oh, my goodness. Well, did it seem more real compared to an experience of a rose? 
if you have a mentor choice, but then you have him out of experience with them. <laughs> that was the only two choices? Yeah. Oh, oh my god. god. Um, Would you want to get back to it and get more deeply on it? Yeah. Do you think therefore it might be more real? Yeah, I think I think so. You get close to maybe what it really is itself? <coughs> There's a certain freedom there. I, uh, uh, put that uh, into it. Freedom. You experience freedom as well. You're very cautious about using the word freedom. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was. Yeah, I don't want to say beauty. Why not? I don't know. Why not? Because it seems like beauty implies particulars. And there was no focus on particulars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> That's bad. You didn't even beautiful. like that. You didn't even <laughs> like that answer. Beauty. It was beautiful. Um, yeah. Oh, she said it. The drill. Yeah. Beautiful. Freedom. And you touched. Light filled. Yourself yeah. on a profound way, so yeah. in that sense it was true. Yeah. All of those words are ideas. Oh. Mm -hmm. All of those ideas are what? Ideas with a capital I. Mm. Oh, okay. Derived from, inferred from that experience of divine analysis. Those are the ideas. Oh. <laughs> Those are ideas. Okay. So we must now declare another third kind. For our former exposition, those two were sufficient, one of them being assumed as a model form, intelligible and ever uniformly existent. Uh, and the second as the model's copy, subject to becoming invisible. Is that right? Right. Would that be a model copy? That the model is intelligible. You missed the part you just read. And the copy is visible. Yes. So one's of the mind and one's of the sense. We did not at that time distinguish, considering that those two were sufficient. But now the argument seems to compel us to try to reveal by words a form that is baffling and obscure. Hmm. Shouldn't that it awaken your curiosity? It should, especially since I don't feel compelled. <laughs> but I will go ahead. What? Essential property, then, are we to conceive it to possess? This in particular, that it should be the receptacle, and as it were the nurse of all becoming with a capital B. Yet true though this statement is, we must needs describe it more plainly. Right. Yeah. So how are we going to 
more. Clearly. Yeah, you must have a pretty good idea of it. Yeah. Yeah, right. That, however, is a difficult task, especially because it is necessary for its sake to discuss first the problem of fire and its fellow elements. Yeah. Why not water, earth, air? Mm -hmm. It's actually earth, so it is a... Right. So he's starting with an image of, what was it? Fire. Well, the problem of fire. Yeah, the problem of fire, or luminosity. Is there a relationship between fire and earth? Is there any other thing? Yeah. Other thing? Mm -hmm. Fire gives off, like no. the sun to the sun rays. One is the model of love. Oh, yeah. Hey, you ever wonder about the sun? Yeah. That's a, huh. it's a copy of the Oh, Monocity. okay. That's where it gets its code. Okay. And the light out here is a copy of the sun? How's your reading? How's your it's it's good. Mm. Well, it seems to take a bunch of people to be around me for one thing. <laughs> Otherwise, I fall asleep. Right. And it's very helpful. Oh, okay. Also, but it's not anything you haven't known and heard before. Right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's stop that right now. Let's stop doing that right now. <laughs> Everything is fine. Is recognition in the moment. No more forgetfulness. That's a major one. Um, yeah. The river of life, right? Okay. Go ahead, another shot. Okay, so um, what essential property then are we to conceive it to possess? Okay, okay, so um, for the, okay. For, so, um, for in regard to these, it is hard to say which particular element we ought really to term water rather than fire, and which we ought to term any one element rather than each and all of them, while still employing a terminology that is reliable and stable. How then shall we handle this problem, and what likely solution can we offer? First of all, we see that which we now call water becoming by condensation, as we believe, stones and earth. And now he's going through the way in which each of the elements can be transformed into the other. Right. 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 We do not agree. We might want to know, is there any substance that remains the same throughout all of the changes? Might there not? You might. I don't know if I would. I don't know if I would. I mean, something, I mean... I, yeah, you might wonder. Yeah, okay. It seems like it's a diversion from just the reading. Hmm. It's the content of what you're reading. It's yeah, it diver, is. It's not the diversion. Oh. That has to be explicit. Okay. No, no, try it. Well, the next line, okay. Yeah, right. So, um, and again, the same substance by dissolving and dilating, becoming breath and air. Okay, so, yeah, and... You agree, water can become air as it condenses? Yeah. And so at, on to the other elements? As it evaporates, it can become air? Yeah. 
And as it condenses, it can become a stone or a rock. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything that remains uh, constant in either of them? Or is that what stands underneath the whole thing? I guess some hydrogen and some oxygen. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. <laughs> And some other minerals. <laughs> You're just saying the water came from gas, which is what you just said. And the gas yeah. came from air. So you, you put another name on it. But if you stay with the terms here, right. then air, the fire becomes air, becomes water, becomes earth, but, yeah. without having to use the model of chemistry. But I'm just thinking, oh, OK. You know, like on the beach, sometimes you'll see little opals. Uh, like down in Dana Point, you see a lot of opals on the rocks that have formed from the water leaching the minerals out of the stones. What are you doing? And they become rocks. <laughs> but now, can those rocks, can those rocks now break back down into water? You really want to do chemistry here, don't you? No, she's in the chemistry. No, I think she just saw something and she had to shift it. Yeah, back to the, the material. material. Back to the material. She saw. She saw some. She saw. She was seeing. Shifted there. You don't have to question that. The question I asked, which you retreated from, is it possible that there is something elemental that's behind all of those that can account for those changes? <laughs> if they in fact change from one to the other. Okay. Oh, it's either nothing. Something. It's got to be something. And if it is something, it must stand underneath all of those changes. And you might wonder what that is. So you're talking about Here. some Here one wrong. thing that could account for both changing from water to air and from water to rock. A, a substance underlying that change, I think, is the question. Yeah, too. some change element. That's Fire. That which they're both made of. Gotta go. But that would make them want to stay the same. Why would, if they're all made of the same, why would that make them change? That would make them change. Right. Okay. That's a whole lot of shaking going on. Fire is made on the outside. <laughs> That's what it is, the shaking. So uh, I'd go back to so even. Last night. If you don't mind me change something, a second. I'm. What you say in answer to this question will probably not change my mind at all really? until I see it myself. Of course. But I wanted to suggest that the fourth element in that passage we're looking at is what we're talking about right now, suchness. And, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that when you put all four together, you can get the dynamics of the psyche that you were talking about when you walked in today, mm -hmm. which is a reasoning part of becoming part of uh, place and perception as it relates to perception. As it, all, all as it relates to perception. Mm. Okay, but it's still, I'm still not convinced, so oh, I really? have to go back. But yeah. thank you. I just oh, yeah. wanted to see if I could put that in yeah. put that in context. Thank you. Okay, so we were going to talk today, so is there another time when we can talk for yeah, tomorrow? Yeah, all the way to LA. Sure. Any um, thoughts? Tomorrow? Tomorrow is good. Okay. Yeah, right after the... That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So, um, so I have a question. Which is... What? Yeah, after tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you, Pierre. But, um, that's the goal. Thank you. Yeah, Your phone's ringing. Thank you. Your phone's ringing. Yeah, I got Okay. Thank oh, you, Pierre. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.